Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 8. Now 8 o'clock, an argument between a mother and her son takes a deadly turn as the family home burns in the background. And only on KCAL 9 tonight, pit bull panic. People in the Long Beach neighborhood are outraged. They say a violent pit bull is killing their pets. Burglars have a new bullseye. Target the late night break-ins at Southland stores. We begin tonight with breaking news. An incredible sight tonight in Dallas, Texas, as dozens of police officers chased a man suspected of gunning down three people today. Two of them are police officers. This was a scene just minutes ago as a suspected shooter in a white pickup truck was spotted driving around town. We're told then that cops gave chase. He reportedly fired at them. He finally crashed on a dead end road. Then dozens of police officers swarmed that neighborhood. CBS Dallas reports the driver is the suspected shooter and he is now under arrest. And this was a scene of the shooting around five hours ago. Police say a store security officer detained a man for shoplifting and called for backup. Now, when two officers arrived, the man pulled out a gun and shot all three of them. We're told tonight the officers and that guard are in surgery tonight. People in Dallas are still in shock after five officers murdered in an ambush about two years ago. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Jeff Vaughn. Hi, everyone. I'm Susie Sa. Here at home, a strange standoff in Hacienda Heights involving a naked man. That's right. An armed man parked himself on the roof of a home and then refused to come down for hours. KCAL9's Crystal Cruz tells us how the standoff finally came to an end. What a mess this guy left out here, tossing things onto the street. And then right up there was where all of this happened. Now, deputies say this man is a felon with priors. Here is video of the 50 year old man taking his clothes off, causing quite the scene, waving his arms around. Just a bizarre situation as sheriff's deputies arrived. Now, the call came in as shots fired by a man with a gun, barricading himself inside, more like outside of the home. A second video shows deputies Kate. Nine take over, lunge at the guy as he tries to use a shirt to swat the dog off of him, but then he decides it's best not to fight with this animal. A third video shows the ending to the drama, the man taken by SWAT, and now the investigation is happening. Now, neighbors were told to stay away during all of this and really had no idea what was happening. I was on the roof naked and throwing his clothes. <laughs> no, we didn't see anything. Who was that guy up there? I don't know. The, that guy is crazy. We've learned deputies have been called to this home before. Four roommates do live here. As for that man, he was taken to the hospital and later to jail. I'm Crystal Cruz in Hacienda Heights, KCAL 9 News. What started as an argument between a mother and her son suddenly turned deadly in Gardena. Police say it happened while the family's home on South Orchard Avenue was on fire. Then when fire crews showed up, they say the son suddenly opened fire on his own mother. Kick on Dave Lopez has the deadly family dispute tonight. Behind me, the house where firefighters arrived this morning thinking they were going to put out a fire. Instead, according to the LAPD, they ran smack dab into a real family dispute. A dispute that wound up with the son, according to the LAPD, shooting the mother right in front of the firefighters. Back, LA City firefighters scramble for cover. <laughs> and the anguished cries of a young daughter knowing that her mother has been killed, police say, by her older brother, Jose Ramirez, age 28, who earlier, they say, had called 911 to report a fire in the back bedroom of their home. They yelled at me to get back in the house. Because? They didn't tell me. They just yelled, get back in the house. Oh, what's going on? They'll get in the house. <laughs> Jeffrey Yu lives across the street from the shooting. He said he heard four gunshots, went outside, and saw firefighters huddled next to his house behind their rigs. They could not have reacted in time. The LAPD uh, explaining that the son shot the mother right in front of firefighters. And it happened so quickly, they couldn't do anything about it. According to firefighters, mom and son were on the front yard, not far from where I'm standing, when they arrived on scene. The fire was in the back of the house, and it was contained to a bedroom. The fire department said they were arguing. The mother was yelling, arrest him, arrest him. And then... Quickly, the son went back in the house. The fire department assumed it was okay because the flames were in the back of the house and not in the front. He said he needed to get something personal. When he came out, he had a handgun with him, and then in front of the firefighters, right here, shot his mother in the head four times and then went back in the house. All I know is the dad told me that he was trouble. I knew something wasn't right, but I didn't think it'd be like this. After Ramirez shot his mother, he ran back into the house. Police say he shot himself and then kept police at bay until he surrendered 
an hour later. Again, according to detectives, there was no warning, nothing the firefighters can do. The suspect remains in critical condition. From Gardena, Dave Lopez, KCAL 9 News. Now to a freeway shooting in Colton. A man was shot while driving on the northbound 215 just past Washington. He says someone in a gold car pulled up and opened fire through the driver's side window around 1.30 this morning. Now police say he was taken to a hospital with a gunshot wound in the arm, wound in the arm rather. The CHP is now looking for that shooter. Well, you really hate to see this here. Water worries in Compton. Dirty water coming out of faucets and people tonight scared to drink it. As KCAL 9's Lisa Siegel reports, this is not a new problem. Well, imagine if you had to drink, bathe, even brush your teeth in brown, murky water. Well, that's what's happening here, and people are definitely fed up. Yeah, no, it's, it's horrible. Norma Hernandez has lived in her Compton home for more than 20 years, but she says the last few have been a nightmare. So they say that the problem has been recent, but it hasn't. That's because this is what's coming out. Dirty, smelly brown water. She took this video more than a year ago, and this video just two days ago. It's just horrible. There's no one that could drink this water, cook with it, or do anything. Today, officials with the Sativa LA County Water District that serves Compton and Willowbrook held a press conference to address concerns. They were met by angry residents who say they are fed up. <laughs> Many are already meeting with attorneys about a class action lawsuit. Our water district. Even so, the water district officials announced an aggressive new program to clean the 80 year old pipelines, which they say are the cause of the discoloration and odd smelling water. It's called flushing and now will be done four times a year. We open up hydrants uh, and through high velocity pressure, we try to um, clean up as much sediments as, I, as we can. <laughs> Officials showed how it worked in the clean water after, but people living here say it's been done before, and they don't believe their water is safe to drink. It's, it's very scary, the way that the water looks, actually, and I, I have no idea what's in there. Now, the district says the discolored water is safe to drink. Health inspectors were out taking samples, but Norma Hernandez says even after the flushing today and seeing her water running mostly clean, she doesn't trust it. She says it's been done before, and ends up like this days later. And tonight, many of the people we talked with went to the Compton City Council meeting to see what they can do to help as well. Back to you. An actress accused of human trafficking in a sex slave ring is out of jail tonight and headed to Orange County. Allison Mack posted $5 million bond at today's federal court hearing in Brooklyn. She's been released to serve home detention at her parents' house in Los Alamitos. Mack's mother put the home up as collateral for bail. The former Smallville actress is restricted from most Internet access after she allegedly tried to destroy emails and text messages involving the Nexium cult and its leader, Keith Rainier. Rainier remains behind bars tonight. Court documents show Mack is working on a plea agreement now with prosecutors. Well, tonight, President Trump and the First Lady hosting their first state dinner at the White House in honor of the President of France. Only one Democrat was invited to that lavish event. Most members of the media kept away. KCAL 9's Weijia Zhang is there. Jeff, President Trump and President Macron capped off a busy day with a lavish dinner. And it was a day where their warm relationship was on full display with lots of patting on the back and even hand holding. But their disagreements also came through. President Trump and First Lady Melania welcomed French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Brigitte to the White House Tuesday night, marking their first state dinner. May our friendship grow even deeper. May our kinship grow even stronger. The glitzy event capped a day full of pomp, circumstance, and some personal grooming between the two leaders. I'll get that little piece of dandruff off. About 130 guests, including Vice President Pence, Ivanka Trump, and Jared Kushner, dined on rack of lamb and nectarine tart. The first lady, who planned every detail of the event, stole the spotlight in a dazzling silver gown. Thank you for making this an evening we will always cherish and remember. Unlike years past, only one Democrat was invited to the state dinner. Celebrities and most members of the media were also excluded. Before the event, the two leaders held bilateral discussions on foreign matters. President Macron urged President Trump to keep U.S. troops in Syria and stay in the Iran nuclear deal. There is a chance, and nobody knows what I'm going to do. 
Earlier, Mr. Trump lashed out at the idea that Iran might restart their nuclear program if the U.S. pulls out of the deal. They restart it, they're going to have big problems, bigger than they've ever had before. The French president will address a joint meeting of Congress Wednesday, arguing in favor of the agreement. President Trump has until May 12th to decide whether to keep the U.S. in the current Iran nuclear deal. And even though he seems open to hashing out a new agreement, there is no indication that he has plans to stay in the current one. In fact, in his own words, the president says no one knows what he plans to do. I'm Weijia Jiang at the White House. Susie, back to you in Los Angeles. We just thank you. The thousands of people took to the streets of Hollywood today to mark the 103rd anniversary of the Armenian genocide. Genocide, never again! Genocide, never again! Supporters say as many as one and a half million Armenians were killed during the genocide campaign started by the Ottoman Turkish Empire in 1915. The Turkish government denies that any genocide took place and say the Armenians died as a result of World War I. The protesters want Turkey to apologize and the U.S. government to formally recognize the deaths as a genocide. Now to the race to replace Governor Jerry Brown. It is tightening up tonight. New poll by CBS San Francisco found it's now almost a dead heat between Democrats Gavin Newsom and Antonio Villaraigosa. Lieutenant Governor leads with 21 percent of the poll, while the former L.A. mayor is right there at 18 percent. The top Republican candidates, John Cox at 15 percent, Travis Allen at 10 percent. The poll also found 57 percent of registered voters plan to vote in the June 5th primary. That would be the most for a non-presidential year in four decades. Top two vote getters, regardless of party, move on to the general election come November. Finally free, a rapper who says he was wrongly convicted gets a state Supreme Court on his side later. Evelyn. And we're getting a look outside right now at the Santa Monica Pier. A lot of people enjoying this evening. Change is on the way. I'll have your forecast ahead. Also ahead, Brayson Burke. Also at 8, the president's nominee to lead the second largest federal agency runs into some major roadblocks. And brazen burglaries in the middle of the night. Thieves breaking into Target stores looking for one thing. And still ahead here on KCAL 9 News at 8.